Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks, another edition of Lockdown News Roundup. So let's start with the BBC, up to their old tricks, putting out disinformation, lies and real fake news. Check out this BBC YouTube video uploaded two days ago. The title contains a lie and disinformation. The title of the video says, schools in England to fully reopen on March the 8th with compulsory COVID tests, BBC News. The tests are not compulsory. They are voluntary, as stated in government documents and on government website, as is the wearing of face masks in the schools. But the BBC, oh no, they put in the title of the video that it is compulsory. And if you go to the video and you see the comments, which there is about a thousand or so comments on the video, many of these people are going away with the notion that it is compulsory. This is not the case. And I'm sure the propaganda BBC will say that, oh, that is a mistake. But I personally think it's deliberate in order to, to suggest to parents that this is something your children have to do to coerce them into accepting it by deliberately not stating that it is voluntary. This is the BBC for you, governmental propaganda machine that misleads the public. A parent sent me a letter from their school talking about the kids coming back and again pointing out correctly that it is voluntary, the testing, the masks, but of course it is stated that it is highly recommended. There is something very sinister going on here. When you look through the media over the last couple of days, very little mention of these tests on kids and masks being voluntary has been made. This morning though, I do see The Telegraph and The Guardian have put out these articles. Schools told they cannot force pupils to wear masks. It says here, governments say children should not be denied education for non-compliance with measures that are voluntary. So there are two articles today, but it's not enough. It's not enough, really. It seems to me that the idea here is to make it seem like it's compulsory while it is actually voluntary. I can imagine now, what are the schools going to be like? The kids will be pressured into wearing the masks, and the ones that don't will be bullied by the kids that do. Who will have the backing of the school? Pupils who refuse will be picked on by staff, etc. You can imagine it. Personally, I wouldn't send my kids back to school if it was me. It seems obvious that these new rules of expecting kids to wear masks all day shows that they don't care about your kids. So yeah, stuff that. And the BBC putting up videos with compulsory in the title. Now, that is an actual lie and real fake news. That really is misleading people. And you'll notice YouTube haven't taken that video down. In other news, we have this revealed Every single prosecution under government's Coronavirus Act has been overturned. It says here, every single one of the 246 prosecutions launched so far under a draconian coronavirus law has been done so incorrectly, the latest figures show. The Coronavirus Act was introduced by the government in March last year at the start of the pandemic. It contains emergency powers such as banning mass gatherings and enforced screening for people deemed infectious to restrict the spread of the virus. The latest Crown Prosecution Service figures for January, which showed all 14 people accused of breaching the act last month, had been wrongly charged, which means there have now been 246 incorrect prosecutions since it was introduced. On Wednesday, human rights barrister Kirsty Brimelow cited this data as she suggested the act should be repealed, she told Parliament's Human Rights Committee. 100% of prosecutions under the Coronavirus Act to date have been wrong. That shows to me there is a very strong case to repeal that section that has continually been used wrongly and unlawfully against the members of the public. The statistics aren't usual within a criminal justice context to repeatedly see the law being unlawfully applied. What it does demonstrate is that the safeguards are not working within the criminal justice system and it also demonstrates that where there are no safeguards which apply, where fixed penalty notices are applied, where there is no lawyer overseeing them, it's highly likely there are thousands of those fines that have been unlawfully issued. So once again, 
unlawful prosecutions. This government, this woman claims, is responsible for possibly thousands of unlawful prosecutions and fines being imposed by a government that, if this is correct, is acting unlawfully against you, the public. So we have an unlawful act brought in by the government pretty much aimed at removing your freedom to voice an opinion and to protest. Then we've got the BBC telling you it's compulsory when in fact it's voluntary, openly spreading misinformation, lying, cheating. Are you picking up on a pattern here? I know I am. In other news, this photo is doing the rounds on social media. This is from the USA. Do you remember a few videos back there was a photo of police in Cardiff in these yellow tents walking around? Well, here we have them in a school in Wenatchee, Washington State. Kids playing in the school band, socially distanced and inside their own personal tents. Look at the kid with the tuba. Inside the tent, he can hardly fit into it. Clown world, personified. Another reason to not bother sending your kids back. But look, look at the tweet put out by the school. They said, you can't see them smiling beneath the masks, but students at Wenatchee and East Mount High Schools are glad to be back. The article quotes Wenatchee principal Eric Anderson, who celebrates the fact that the school environment has been carefully tailored to ensure that students never remove their face coverings. He said, we really have an environment in this building where there never is a reason where a kid has to take their mask off, he said. That's presumably why the children in the image have been made to stand inside the tents because they had to remove their masks to play the instruments. These idiot schools and their idiot teachers and headmasters are proud of this crap, proud of isolating kids, dehumanizing them. That's just great. Do not accept this madness. If you allow your kids to go to school, be forced into wearing masks all day, told to have two tests a week, and, and now stuck in their own personal tents when they are playing music, maybe when they're gonna be eating food because they can't wear a mask in that actual moment. If you allow your kids into this environment, then you are not fit to be a parent. That's just my opinion. In other news, we've got censorship and Facebook. This story truly highlights how much these organizations are overreaching and banning anything that goes against their narrative or even looks like it's going against their narrative. Facebook algorithm accuses 81-year-old grandmother of hate speech over knitted pigs comment and threatens to ban her account. Facebook's algorithm flagged an 81-year-old grandmother's comments about knitted pigs as an example of hate speech and threatened her with a permanent ban. So basically we have a granny who created a Facebook page to share her knitted characters that she creates and she sells these to raise money for charity. It says here the Smith Family Charity, which helps disadvantaged children. That's a sweet thing to do, surely. Oh no, Facebook have got a problem with it. After posting a picture of her own knitted pigs, the granny referred to them as white pigs and high-vis pigs, resulting in the threat to terminate her account over hate speech. Facebook have since said it was an AI mistake. Their automated system sometimes flags content that was perfectly all right. We keep hearing these high-tech global billionaires, how AI is the future and how much they want it to impeach into our lives. At what point in the future will it be, oh, I'm afraid your bank account has been frozen. An algorithm has made a mistake. Or, oh, your supply to food has been cut off. Our AI has made a mistake. Anyhow, I'm waffling. Talking of Facebook, I've had a lot of people suggest I should set up a Facebook page or a group. Now, let me be clear. I hate Facebook. I hate it with a passion. I have no interest in it personally. But as many of you have suggested, there is a huge audience on there. So it may be a way of getting the videos out there some more. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I set up a Facebook page? UK Column have one and it's got quite a large following. Is there anything to lose from doing that? Let me know in the comments. If the majority of you say yes, I'll give it a spin. If the majority say no, I won't bother. As always, Thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to hugotalks.com. It's the only place where I get to keep the subscribers. If YouTube delete the channel, I lose all the subscribers. So if you're going to subscribe, do it at hugotalks.com and I'll see you later.